Hello, people. I am Jabby Kuwait, joined by Achara the Kirk. What's up, peeps? We're gonna look at Irfan and Nawazuddin Siddiqui in Bypass 2003. This is from Irfan, Co Irfan Club, the YouTube channel. It's got 17,000 subscribers. I'm not sure what other content exists on this channel because I didn't do my research. I just saw this short film in front of me because Achara said, hey, this is a short film with, and I'm like, yes. With who? For obvious reasons, I would really like to watch this, and it is 15 minutes and 51 seconds long. So, uh, sit tight, strap in, get your popcorn, here we go. Oh wait, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and also hit the Jennifer Sun bell icon, and all notifications please, so you get notified every time we drop another video. Also, if you wanna see more from The Jabs and The Achas, we are on the Patreon with more stuff that is not available on the regular, this thing that yes. you're watching us. Okay, here we go. Oh god. No, 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 that's okay. Oh, oh boy. Oh, I'm nervous. Oh, they went the wrong way? Because they weren't paying attention. Uh, that's that's what's being insinuated yeah. that, I'm sure. He's a thief. No, Zudin? Or fun. I can't tell who it is. I think it's not Zudin. Oh, what? How do you get their wallet? Oh. Did he stalk this woman or something? Oh! Oh! No! No! You know, I'm so used to older Nawazuddin. Yeah. Every time I see the younger Nawazuddin, I'm like, damn, he was such a handsome dude. Yeah. I'm like. I have no idea. Not, not, I mean, not that he's bad looking now, but like, I'm no. just saying, like. He's got a certain type of handsome. He, 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 was, he was a pretty boy in his younger days. Yeah. Oh, I thought that was the. I thought they got their wallet. No. But this is what they do. They're bandits. Perfect. Oh, here we go. He just happened to be nearby. No, no, no. Are they dead? No. Oh, nice cut. No pun intended. You said cut because he cut his arm, yeah.
interesting that he cut his hand instead of just yeah. undoing his watch. I think I see where this is going. Do you? Yeah. Don't tell me.
Oh, did he just get? He got axed. Oh. <laughs>
They show birds at the beginning of the film as well. I don't remember. Yeah, there's a lot in that short film. Okay, there's so much to unpack here. The fact that they showed the money with Gandhi's face on it and the blood spilling, I feel like is symbolic of something there. I don't know if I'm projecting onto this, right? but like, it almost feels like in some way they are talking about either the blood spilled during Gandhi's time or partition and the violence that came because of partition and like, there's no good guys here. Everyone's yeah, bad on some level. Yeah, I mean, level. that 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 was <clears throat> immediately apparent because um, the moment I saw Irfan's character, I was like, oh, okay, cool. So he's going to be the protagonist. He's going to yeah. come in and do what cops are supposed to do. And then very quickly I found out, no, um, that's and not the case. I don't know if it's talking about partition. I'm just, I'm posing that as a potential interpretation here because they, specifically because they showed Gandhi. That's what threw me. What's great about the short film is that anytime you thought it was going in a particular direction, it sort of took you in this other direction. Yeah. For instance, like what you just said, you think the cop's gonna show up, there's gonna be a shootout, or yeah. there's gonna be a cop chasing robbers kind of thing. Uh -huh. That's not what happens at all. It goes in this other direction. I'm thinking when uh, Nawaz and his friend show up at that eatery, the side of the road, and they hear the girl, you know, screaming, I thought that Nawaz Arun was gonna save her. Yeah. Didn't happen. No. At least not in the way that I thought it was gonna happen. Yes. The conflict between uh, Irfan Khan and Nawazuddin Siddiqui, I didn't know that uh, Irfan Khan was gonna get killed like that. Well, a lot of the deaths were uh, so sudden because even in the last one, yeah. I had this strange feeling about the woman just from the way like she was dressed and, and the way she was kind of looking at him. I had this feeling that when he was cutting away that maybe they were gonna be bad guys too because it seems like everyone there at this bypass area. They're all bandits yeah. or bad people in some way. Well, there was also a potential message about vegetarianism in there because they showed Nawazuddin axe the guy's arm and they cut to this guy cutting at meat. Mm -hmm. And you think, for, well, that's just a clever cut yes. to not show you the violence. But at the same time, it could be also speaking about how when we kill animals, it's like we're killing each other because you're taking a life still to get what you want and it's selfish. Yeah, and I wonder if maybe karma is one of the messages in this potential. because everyone kind of gets their due. The way the story was told, I thought was fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, I, the way it was shot, I thought was also amazing. One of the things I thought about while I was watching it was how it feels like India. I mean, I'll, I'll be, I haven't seen too much from pre-1990 for India in, in terms of trailers and whatnot, but it feels like 1990 to 2020, that span of 30 years feels like they covered what America did in 50 years or, mm -hmm. or 60 years, right? Because if you look at films from the 90s in India, it feels like films from the 60s and 70s over here. And that film, even though it's 2003, feels like something that we would have done way earlier, like in the 80s. The way it's taking its time, the wide shots, it almost reminds me of, the film I saw just the other day is The Right Stuff. And just watching that style of filmmaking, it's very different from today. The only time that I recall seeing anything that remotely like that, that tries to accomplish that, is Blade Runner 2049. That was a boring movie as far as I'm concerned, but like, I appreciated its attempt to do storytelling in a different kind of way. Yeah. You know, wide shots, interesting cuts. There's this movie called The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. What they explored in that film was cutting from super, super wide to extreme tight. And before The Good, The Bad, The Ugly, that wasn't really something you saw a lot. Right. And so here, they did something interesting where they they had a wide of the car and cut to a tight of Nawazuddin's face. And so they employed a similar technique there. And it sort of jars you, it makes you snap to attention again. Just the use of editing here was very, very clever in yes. general. The use of angles here. One of the things that I thought about as well is that I, I'm almost 99% sure this was shot on film. Even a bad transfer of film to digital. It looked like it was transferred from film to VHS to digital. It's gone through a lot of layers, but even with all that, it still looks good, Yeah. right? I mean, it, film just has this crispness to it, the dynamic range of film. It's hard for digital to match that, even today. Even when Irfan Khan was done with, I guess, the prostitute or the lady who was stuck there. Um, she, yeah, she, I don't think she was a prostitute. I, I She looked like a bride, like maybe. A, well, she was indentured yeah. or like an like indentured servant. Like she was kidnapped or, or, yeah. or something. So he comes into the hut and you can see the outside 
is exposed and the inside is exposed and it's very difficult to do that on digital. I think that's a telltale sign that it's film because you can see both. Right. And it's not done in such a way that sort of makes you recoil and go, oh, that feels artificial like an iPhone photo. Mm -hmm. Like iPhone, if you take a picture with an iPhone in HDR where it exposes for both and it meets you halfway in the middle, there's an uncanny feeling when you look at that. Whereas here, it feels real and lifelike because film, I think, captures images closer to how your eye captures images. Right. It had a nice crisp look to it and I liked how it took its time but it was done in like a very Alfred Hitchcock kind of way where even though it was slower, you still felt tension. Yeah, it was really good at ratcheting up that tension and I think you kind of get that feeling of desolation and the fact that things are gonna go really wrong because it starts off kind of sweet, right? Because yeah. you've got the young married couple but even the angle at which like we're first shown them is her hand, it was her, was it her hand on the steering wheel or yeah. his hand on, her hand first and then his hand and it feels kind of like like it's really close and claustrophobic you have the expanse of the land and the color of the desert and everything you just kind of feel like this isn't gonna be this happy movie you know what right. I mean like you know from the start and it keeps building on that and I think a lot of it has to do with the way it's shot and the sound and, and everything yeah I really really would love to hear about the intention of the story like what the symbolism is like because they had the impasse the two different directions or just the fork in the road yeah and the bypass like the shortcut or like bypassing right, but the main road. Whatever the case may be, it's a split. Multiple times they went this direction and that was a problem. The director on some level is saying, we need to go a different direction. Yeah. At least I think that's what's being said there. There's a lot to unpack here and I don't know that I'm able to get it all in just this sitting alone. I think I'd have, I'd have to yeah. let it percolate for a while. But one of the things is that innocent people are often caught in the um, crossfire of all the bad guys. Well, right. yeah, and I think it's also talking about the cyclical nature of either life or just like wrongdoing. Even the the last car, when it comes out, it goes back around in the bypass again, and you get this feeling that the characters are in some sort of loop. Each one is gonna get their comeuppance, and no one is a noble character, really. Except for the couple in the beginning. But we don't know. I'm fairly certain that, that there's they some, were there, innocent. Yeah, that they were innocent. There's something about that I haven't figured out yet, but something about how innocent people get caught in the crossfire of the wicked, of the selfish, mm. and they're just trying to live their lives and be happy, celebrating their love, and then they get killed needlessly, yeah. and it's horrific. There has to be some sort of elevated symbolism there yeah. that I just haven't figured out yet, but there's something about that that we're like we're on the cusp of understanding because they were happy and content and just fine, and then they got blindsided by this thing that they could not have foreseen. They didn't even re seem to realize that they had gone off the path, you know, mm. like you said. Oh, it just seems like they yeah. just veered off the, the beaten track and then right. here they are in this situation Actually, that they don't expect. Yeah, I mean, that's another thing entirely. It's like one false turn and you could get killed. One little mistake could end your life. And there's no way you could have seen it coming. That's what's crazy. There's so much cool conversation that you could pull from this. I really, really, really like the way it was shot. Yeah. Um, I, I like the way the DP and the director work together here because what they what they do is quite magnificent and there was a lot of symbols. I don't know what the birds symbolize, but they were shown at the beginning and the end, maybe just as a means to book in the movie. I right? don't think anything in this short is done without deliberate. purpose. Yeah, it's all deliberate. Yeah. Like every single shot of this has a meaning. Um, well, at the beginning they show one bird, at the end they show two birds. I don't know what that means, but huh. th there's something there. Anyway, the car is white. White represents innocence, if you want to use that as symbolism. It might have just been a coincidence that the car is white, but white, to me, usually represents innocence, yeah. purity. Yeah. And the car at the end is what color? White. Is it also white? No, it's no. not. It's gray. I don't know if the car's color has any symbolism to it. I don't know either. But... It's off-white. It's not pure anymore. I'm just throwing the ideas out there. Um, the acting, we haven't even spoken about that. The acting was pretty darn good, man. I mean, like, yeah. lines make acting easier, I think. <laughs> when you have nothing to say, you have to convey so much more without speaking and without overdoing it. Yeah. And that's difficult. I think, like anytime I get an audition and I only have a line to work with, one sentence to work with, I'm like, what? How am I supposed to do anything with this? Like, it seems like it's so easy to screw this up. You I know? actually prefer not having lines. Oh, but. no, I, I prefer having lines because then I know what I'm working with or what, what the goal is, you know? Right. Now, as in a Siddiqui, did, like, even back then, he was amazing because everything was subtle and real. He has this really great 
air of potential violence. Yeah. Which I think is what makes him so stellar in these types of roles. He's more like an anti-hero or he's just a bad guy, but physically when you look at him, he doesn't kind of give you that sense of like, oh, I'm a big scary guy. But there's just something about him when he plays these characters that you're immediately on guard and you're like, that guy's dangerous. There was a great moment between him and Irfan when he was trying to leave the, the hut and Irfan stops him and you just see Irfan towering over him. There was something cool about that little moment. Yeah, I thought Irfan was great in this as well because like he has that kind of look, especially in this where he kind of falls into that good guy stereotype right. look more right. and then he's actually not and there's that air of entitlement that he does in like this. in yeah. this yeah. where he stops Nawazuddin and he's like no and he's like extremely derogatory without using any words like you said yeah. and it's just all in the actions and I think when you're doing something that's completely silent like this or like not using language because we had the guy who was probably like a deaf mute or something who was using sound you have to be very intentional with everything that you do and they did a really good job with a lot of the close-ups and stuff where you're catching the eye movements and the right. minute head movements and, and stuff like that. And so it's communicating a lot. And so it does show that you don't necessarily have to have language. Although there were certainly moments in this where I was like, I wish they could have said something because- It, it feels like they would have. Yeah, it feels yeah. like they would have. And yeah. so it kind of took me out of it a little sometimes because I was very aware that I was watching a short film. But I think this is much more of like an artistic short film. It's an expression. This of is one of the best short films I've ever seen. A in my message, life. you know. I think I think this is hands down one of the best short films ever made. Just because like everything between the acting, the way it's shot, the editing, the sound design. Yeah. Everything about this short film was on point. Yeah. Yes, I agree with you that there were moments where it's like it felt like they wanted to say something, but they couldn't because that's how the movie yeah, is. Yeah, that's just what it is. Um, I I do think that maybe they should have just said something in that moment and broken the rule of the movie because now it's drawing attention to itself but barring that I thought that like the cyclical nature of the movie as well in 15 minutes they really told an excellent story here. Yeah. they made you think and there's so much to talk about and unpack from this just the cyclical nature of thievery and stealing and yeah. murder again I haven't fully figured that out it's gonna percolate and I'll have more thoughts later on or is it like in you hurting someone else you end up hurting yourself right there's certainly a karmic element there the way that end was handled was also surprising because you hear someone get killed I got tricked because my first thought was he killed that woman. That's what I thought at first, although like I said, at the back of my mind, I did have an inkling that something seemed off yeah. about the woman, but it just seemed to make sense because the friend or the brother or whoever he was to him, he has this thing with women. And that first woman that he killed, that was the moment where I was just like, holy crap, this is like a really, vi like, has this really strong undercurrent of violence because he's being all sweet to the woman and then all of a sudden you just notice the axe come into frame and it's terrifying. Yeah, it's well done. Yeah, it's so well done. You don't see any blood, but you understand the message there, the intention there, which is he is not right in the head. No, like, none, of, none of them are. None but, of yeah. them are. And then like the way he reacted to that woman from the shed. You got that sense of like, oh, she's not safe either. Yeah, because they set it up. When it comes to the third woman, your brain makes the connections and then it's like, nope, just kidding, got you again, right. you know? Yeah, it's powerful. That's good shit, man. There's a part of you that thinks that maybe there's this heroism to Nawazuddin's character because he stops the woman from getting killed. Yeah. And he actually lets her go. And so you think, well, maybe he's a good guy, but then when they get in the truck, you see He's not a good guy. No, because he was yeah. he was gonna rob them too. Right, and then he, they end up getting killed, so everyone's bad. It just leaves you with this sort of weird emotion as you come out of it, but not in like a dark, depressing way. It's more of like, wow, my mind is blown, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, I just want to comment again about the directing, editing, and acting of this was just on point, man. Uh, yeah. I thought it was wonderful. And all the little things, all the little nuances uh, that Nawazuddin and Irfan was doing in this. For me, more so, uh, more so Nawazuddin than Irfan, but that's probably because Nawazuddin got more screen time. Yeah. He had more to do, and so it's not really fair against Irfan in any way whatsoever. I mean, they both did an excellent job, but it's like I was really drawn to Nawazuddin's performance in this, mm -hmm. and I thought he did a fantastic job. But the the woman who who played the indentured lady, like. She did a good job too, that just that fear, because there was this moment where her eyes held on something. I think it was holding on Nawazuddin's friend, 
when Nawazuddin introduced the glasses to distract his friend. Yeah. And she just held on that guy. She was petrified. And there was something real about that because instead of looking at Nawazuddin, she just held on him. Little micro things like that were so, there was so much of that in this short film. It's so rich with that. And it has to be because there's no dialogue being spoken. Like, I think this is a really great showcase for everyone involved because a lot of the time when you do a short film, especially as a new filmmaker, yeah. it's your calling card. It's you right. going, look, this is what I'm capable of doing. If you just invested in me, I could make something really great. I don't know where this falls in the writer and the director's careers, but to be able to produce something like this, which seems like maybe it didn't really require that much of a budget. It just needs the location and you know the cars or whatever, but it's not using CGI. It's using clever cuts, clever shots, and just a really great story and ratcheting that tension. If they showed this to anyone in the industry and was like, hey, this is what I did, I feel like a lot of people would kind of hopefully be interested in investing in them and, and helping them to create more good movies. Well, unfortunately, this director has not done much. He did Monsoon Shootout with Nawaz uh, much later, like 10 years later, in fact. Oh, wow. And it got a 6.5 out of 10. I have no idea if that's representative at all of the quality of the film, because as we all know, IMDb can be misleading. And then he did a second unit directing on an American film, uh, Colonia, which I have not watched. That was in 2015. Uh, okay. In 2019, last year, he did the Last Hour TV series. I don't know if that's Amazon or if that's like Indian television. Uh, so. I think is that not American television? I don't. I, well, I don't. I don't. I don't know what TV series that is. Like, I don't know if it's Amazon, Netflix, or actual television. He was an actor once. Like, he hasn't done much. It's kind of sad because I think this guy's really talented. Mm -hmm. Like, he's really got an eye. That's the other th half of this. Is this is not Bollywood? This is not Hollywood. This is art. It's truly artistic filmmaking, and that's just not what brings in the bucks. At the end of the day, this is not what brings in the money. This is for the art aficionados. Yeah, the, like the, the art house cinema Yeah, lovers. the cinephiles. Like, this yeah. is, that's what this is for. I hope that with time, this film gets more love and gets more attention, because this is really a cinephile's, like, uh, I don't know. Dream. How, yeah, well, I mean, it's something for the cinephile to feast on. There's just a lot there. I think it's wonderful. It makes me sad that this director's not getting more work, honestly. Like, now that I've seen that, it, ma it makes me upset for him because he deserves more opportunities. He's just not making the blockbuster type movies, so they're not gonna give it to him. I guess, like, if you're someone like the director of Parasite. That's halfway it's, it's, in between. It's finding that happy medium in yeah. order to have that career yeah. where you're creating something that's artistic and that feeds your soul and, and tells an interesting story, but you're also kind of doing it in a way that satisfies the masses. Yeah. So I don't know if that's something that he wants to do. Maybe that's not his goal at all as a director. I mean, you get you that. Know? You know, you, you have those people who are like so true to their principles that they won't ever budge, even if it means they only get to do one movie in their entire life. And you, I mean, that happens. I have to see Monster Shootout now. <laughs> I just, I have to see what that, uh, why that film didn't perform as well, why it didn't resonate with people as much. I'm gonna watch that movie for sure. What this director did here at the very least, like this is one of my favorite short films that I've ever seen in my life. It's, it's incredible. Just, it, it was just really, really well done. You guys, thanks so much for hanging out with us. Hopefully you enjoyed that and the discussion. I know that a lot of people didn't even click on this video for the sheer length of it, but uh, I, this is for me. I enjoyed it. And for you, I assume, as well. I enjoyed the, the heck out of this thing. Um, yeah. Peace out.